18 minutes. Hello all you are, hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? It's Big Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. Well it must be, it says so up there, doesn't it? Now, we just get in a position here of comfort before I get kidnapped outside and chopped up and fed to the pigs by Brick Top. Hi Frank Warren, how are you doing? Uh, I'm going to try and be positive today and I'm going to look at things in a different perspective. Right, for example, Eddie Hearn putting a show on in Saudi Arabia. So he says. Andy Ruiz says he's not fighting in Saudi but he has signed a contract to fight a rematch. So the stumbling block now is the venue. He feels that he won't get a fair shake in Saudi because Eddie's built up a relationship with these Saudi people now. Is the money there in Saudi? Yeah, the money is there. I've heard that off a very good, I'm not going to say source because I think that's a tired word now in the boxing industry. I'm going to say this is off somebody who has a column, who's a presenter, he's got a newspaper column been around the boxing scene for 35 years since the Mickey Duff days and this person I respect and he says the money's there and uh, it's all good so the money's there the money will have been there anyway because Eddie Hearn and his dad their money motivated aren't they their job is to generate money their job is to be a promotional company matchroom which is the number one promotional company in world boxing I think it's just shading top rank now and it's definitely shading golden boy because the word is that Canelo's unhappy so Eddie's not only seen Frank Warren off he's had Mick Hennessy gone to him cap in hand sat on the end of a table while he signed Huey Fury after nearly signing Tyson Fury and Mick's had both them from debut who's to say that Tyson Fury isn't going to go to Eddie Hearn I believe Tyson Fury will sign with Eddie Hearn I know that Tyson Fury has got one fight left with Frank Warren and Frank Warren has now come out and he has said and I quote Tyson Fury signs off on the fights Tyson Fury says who he's fighting, he picks and chooses. We have never heard that from Frank Warren. Never heard that at all. So for Frank Warren to come out and say that is deflecting some heat off him for the Otto Wallin fight because Frank Warren looks to me like he's under pressure for Otto Wallin. And I think their relationship's coming to an end now. So you've got to look for chinks in the armour. I looked for chinks in the armour with the Billy Joe Saunders story a couple of weeks ago when I said he's going to leave. People said I was crazy. But if you back up and go onto my videos and look at the best videos that I've done, I think the best one's 10,500. Then it goes down to about 4,000, you know, the top six or eight. On every single one of them videos, we never got paid for them. When we swear in a video, we don't get paid, and I don't edit it out. It's just how I am, I've got to it, I think. Uh, if we put a camera and I point it at the screen and it picks up footage or anything like that, or interviews, 20 second clips, inserts from, say, for instance, interviews Frank Smith, Spencer Fearon. Uh, Dillian White's friend Dean uh, if any videos that were put up that are inserts like that we don't get paid from because they're off IFL so they have a copyright on that I ain't got a problem with that YouTube they have software that picks up on things like that another thing that YouTube have that we get to see is 
they pick up on the engagement, me engaging with the fans. Now, we are, we have software that we I can tell you that other big companies, we're a small company, 2,000 subscribers, but there are big ones with 400 to 500,000 subscribers. Their engagement rating is awful compared to mine. Mine's very, very high. In fact, it's incredible. It's a green line, 98%. Some people have a red line classed as bad, 18%. So I know that I'm doing right by you, the boxing fans. I'm engaging with you. I don't like to talk about drugs and prison because that is my story, isn't it? Negativity. I want to talk about positivity now. I'm not going to do that in every video because boxing can have a negative effect on you. I can come in this office in the morning, 9am, and I can see loads of emails telling people telling me things about this and that what they were happy with there's a lot to be unhappy with about boxing but let's try and focus on the things to be happy about because when we get a bad fight or a bad show we're all up in arms aren't we what happens then is we become negative as human beings because we're creatures of habit now when we get a positive show like a Ward Gatti or a I don't like to mention this but I have seen a lot of his fights like Carl Frotch Kessler 1 and 2, Ward Gatti 1, 2 and 3, Dillian White Parker, Joseph Parker, Anthony Joshua, Vladimir Klitschko, when we get fights like that it corrects the bad ones we get but we get more bad than good. My argument with boxing is we have a lot of boxers who will sell their own mother for a pound note. I don't like that. I don't like boxers to jump ship. I don't like boxers to change trainers. I don't like them to change promoters. But it happens, doesn't it? People have crossed the street for years and it will always continue to happen. Fighters will go where the money is because it's a short pay, it's a short, sorry, not paid, it's a short career. But getting back to the positive things I want to talk about, the Eddie Hearn show in Saudi. Is it positive and is it negative? So we're going to look at that today while I send Friday's filming on a Wednesday that's going to get there, probably get out tomorrow, Thursday. So that's not good, is it? So I'm going to apologise for that, but my business partner was away from Friday till Tuesday at Twickenham, so there's nothing I can do about that, is there? And I don't upload. I don't do the thumbnails, I don't upload. And I've got a computer that's broke down and it's in the car outside and I can't take it to the computer repair shop till tomorrow and I'm not going to get it back then while probably Monday am I? So so we're a bit behind I'm a bit behind but I'm getting into a routine and I'm and we're sort of like getting there and I'm gonna have a key to this office. Uh, so I'm gonna be trusted with all this, whereas before I've had the code to the building but the manager's been putting the padlock on, so I don't think he likes me, manager, but I'm not sure. But I don't know. No, he might not be keen on Porky. I don't know, but I spoke to owner today who I've grown up with. He says, Kevin, could do with your key. He says, well, you can have one. There you go. But last thing I'm going to want is anything to happen here while I'm in possession of a key because, what's the word now? This is engaging what I want about. I'm giving you a little bit of missile. Because, how can I explain it? If you've been in prison 10 years over a 12 year period, something happens with a multi million pound company and I've got a set of keys. First place, old Bill are going to come. It's me and it. A bit like Dillian White with a drug test. We've all presumed he's not been. Well, not. I haven't presumed anything. I'm just saying, where's the B sample? Because the St. A samples failed, aren't they? And B, and B sample, same P as A sample. So. Why is it missing? But, Dillian's a one time offender, isn't he? So he's not going to get no slack off many people, is he? But regarding myself, we're going to try and get the videos out quicker and on time. Uh, I'm still not going to reveal my sources, although there isn't that many because I tend to work things out as I go along and I study the game. But I do have a few people that tell me things. But I do want positive things, but a lot of it's negative, and I can see why it's negative for the simple reason fighters are not fighting anybody. Tyson Fury's 
completed five fights after he fights Otto Wallin. And out of them five fights, he will, will have had four knockouts against people that, well, Look, in when Tyson retires on boxing, he'll look back on it and he'll think, well, who did I fight? Now, once his fifth fight's up with Frank Warren and he's being paid, where will Tyson go? Well, let's, let's, let's remember this. Tyson's not beholden to Frank Warren. Now, they had their arms around each other and... Look, just watch the show, just watch the circus unfold. Tyson Fury is going to leave Frank Warren soon. Now I, I'm going to say that he gets this fifth fight out of the way and then he evaluates his career. Does he need any belts? No. He's won them all, hasn't he, apart from Deontay Wilder's belt and really he beat him, did he, by one round. But he didn't get the decision. Now, is he a masterful boxer? Yes. Have I got a problem with him? No, but I don't like the fact that he left me Kennedy. I don't like that. I'm a, I like Mick Hennessy, I like him a lot, and I feel that Mick Hennessy, he had him from debut, I think he deserves better than that, and all the things that Tyson used to say about people leaving certain fighters, he used to say Froch, he used to say Carl Froch traded Mick Hennessy, now, well what has he done to Mick? He left Mick, and not only did he leave him, he's gone to Frank, he's gone to Frank Warren now, Frank Warren won't be buying all that. He'll know that Frank Warren has a mechanism that fighters should be treated like mushrooms, fed shit and kept in the dark. Well, that motto will always be with Frank Warren. And you can see now why, can't you? He had Cal Zaggy. He delivered him uh, the fight against Eubank. No, he left Mickey Duff. He went to Frank. He delivered him Eubank in a vacant title belt where Eubank had to take weight off we were fighting Mark Prince, he had to take 7 extra pound off we had 10 days to go on top of the weight he had to take off to make the super middle because he was going to fight a light heavy against Mark Prince he delivered him Eubank we were with him all the way through his career and then they fell out with one fight to go uh, so he didn't pay him for the Hopkins fight because he, he was going to fight Roy Jones so he kept that money back this is where I see problems for Tyson down the line. Whether they're going to be fight, fighting in court, I don't know. When Tyson Fury went with Frank Warren, and I ain't got a problem with Frank Warren. I think he's always in the mix, but I think Tyson's going to go. I think Billy Joe's gone. He's been there over 11 years. He's gone. When he goes stale with Frank, you'd have to say, yeah. Is Billy Joe a good fighter? You'd have to say, He's best middleweight in the world at 160. I think he beats Canelo. If not, why ain't Canelo fought him? Why did he jump up a weight? Why are we looking to fight Kovalev? Billy Joe will fight any of them 160 to 175. That's old school, that. Because there's no super middle back in the day, was there? He'll beat any of them. I don't like how Billy Joe carries off outside boxing, but he can fight. And he'll probably be a better person than I was really in because they sort of manufacture you a little bit don't they but boxing is an horrible sport behind the scenes but who am I to say that I mean look at some of the videos I put out so we all have to have a good look at ourselves don't we with the information that we get but once you've said something on YouTube it's out there isn't it now it is what it is isn't it but getting back to the positives of this we had the urn Saudi Arabia, right, these are what I've jotted down here, there's an alcohol ban, right, for starters, but there's the expense of getting there, Eddie Hearn said that he wanted UK boxing to be in the UK, the UK is where it's at, but now he's saying we have to try other things and go to Saudi, so yeah, I can see that, it's a money game and it is jobs to deliver money for his clients, so let's look at it as if it's Dennis, my mentor and the guy I work for, Dennis Hobson, let's look at it as if it's Dennis. If Dennis came into office and said, Porky, we're going to put a show on in Saudi Arabia. I'd say, are you mad? Or first thing I'd say is, oh, am I going to be allowed in Saudi? Then how am I going to get a visa? He'll go, well, you'll get one. Well, Eddie Hearn's 
people in Saudi, they're saying if you buy a ticket you get an automatic visa. So that's good, isn't it? But nobody there causing any trouble in Saudi anyway, do they? Because they cut your arm off, don't they, for stealing. And if anybody's drunk, don't they lock you up for a year or nine months? Drunk and disorderly, is it nine months? You can get yourself in serious trouble out there. You can't go around putting moves on women in nightclubs and stuff like that. I don't even think there is any. How is there going to be an atmosphere at a show with no alcohol? I don't know, it's not going to be... This is why they're saying they're going to build a stadium at 12,000 seater. If they get this over the line, it's brilliant, but what I'm hearing is... It's about 40 million the site fee, that's what I'm hearing, 40 million, right? Is that good? Yeah, I think it is good. How many minutes we've done here? Should be six minutes left on these, they should be uploaded. Uh, it's about 40 million. I've been told 98% 40 million site fee look at that it failed twice on my computer 98% when these seven videos seven videos there gonna be going four about the Saudi Arabia one the one before this one before the presser and three videos which comes to about 63 minutes or something we're talking to stick so, but Saudi Arabia is it 40 million? So it looks to me, and this is how I, I do know a little bit how they structure these pay per view events because I've had friends that have fought on pay per view, and obviously Dennis has been involved in stuff in the past. 40 million site fee that will pay Joshua and that will pay Andy Ruiz the commercial money and the TV money off it that will pay the undercard and people's wages the gate that will go into the pot along with the pay-per-view money that will all be match rooms and Sky will take their cut and other, other people but the site fee pays the two biggest fees on the night but I'd probably say that match room are probably going to get as much money as Anthony Ruiz and as Andy Ruiz but Andy Ruiz and Joshua, their money is took care of by the site fee. The 12,000 tickets that they're going to sell for the show, they'll sell out because it, it's a massive fight. And it's the biggest fight in boxing at the moment that's going to happen because Fury against Wilder, I don't think is going to happen at all. Well, it's not happening this year, is it? And we were told spring, then we were told autumn. It isn't going to happen. And I personally don't think Tyson Fury will fight Wilder again. He was dropped twice, heavy. He was dropped very heavy in the second one, second knockdown. Why would he want to put himself in danger like that again when he can pick up 11, 12, 13 million for fights that are not as dangerous as that? It's just good business sense, isn't it? For example, if Kev, Kev says to me, Porky, go out there and sort all that factory out for me and I'll pay you £100 a day. I'm going to say no, aren't I? But if he said to me, I'm going to pay you £200 a day, my eyebrows are going to pop up, aren't they? £200? When I can be sat in here doing this for free, or get £200 out there, £200 in my pocket, you're going to take offer up, aren't you? Or maybe for 250 But it is what it is, isn't it? Has that video gone? Yes. You're done. Your video has been sent. Thank God for that, right? So that's on its way now. That's been a nightmare the last two days in my computer. Right, so the 40 million site fee, right? That is sorted. That is sorted now. That's brilliant. Let me just turn this other thing to deal, to deal now. The 40 million pound fee, that's on its way. That'll be Eddie Earns and he'll pay... Ruiz and Joshua out that. Ruiz and Joshua will get paid. The pay-per-view, will it do pay-per-view? Yeah, it'll do pay-per-view. It'll do good pay-per-view numbers. It's a massive fight at the moment, the, the Ruiz-Joshua fight. It's massive. And, uh, it's the biggest fight out there. And Matchroom, they're the biggest promotional company, aren't they? So, It'll be an extravaganza, and if anybody wants to go see something like that, it's the chance of a lifetime, isn't it, to go. Now, if I could get a couple of tickets 
for free, I'd probably go myself. But, because it's a chance, isn't it, to go to a country that you probably won't have, you were probably never going to see again. Whether they're going to be big players in boxing, I don't know, but it looks like they're going to be having a go at it, doesn't it? So, that's a good thing, isn't it? That is a good thing. They're putting money into boxing. It ain't just going to be England, you know, London and Vegas and Madison Square Garden. They're going to be another player at the table. So I, I think that's actually brilliant. So fair play to Eddie Earn. Let's not knock him. I do knock him and I do stick it to him. He's trying something different. Now they're trying, they've gone for a neutral venue because Ruiz didn't want it in America and it's not going to be in Cardiff. But my argument is this. Eddie hasn't got much control over the venue if they're stalling, has he? Now, if Ruiz has beat Joshua that easy, why did you just get on with fight? Just get on with it. So there's some happening with them contracts, but we don't know about. People are saying it's not concrete, but I think they've done well to get it. And Joshua, he, he's like a marketing dream. He's now doing videos for Under Armour saying, mistakes were made, correct your mistakes, go again and... Never give up and all that. I think they're turning a negative into a positive. That is good. But it's not going to alter the fact that Joshua has got a skill set that's not as good as Andy Ruiz's. And that's what it boils down to at the end of the day, a skill set. It's like Andre Ward against Carl Frost. I didn't like what Spencer Fearon said mentioned about it when he was talking about skill set and that. But Ward's skill set is better than Carl Frost's. That's the bottom line. And he won the fight, didn't he? He won his rounds comfortably, and Carl, the five rounds that Carl won, he just won them. And Ward won his rounds comfortably, but he was still 7 5 on scorecards. I had to get that one in, didn't I? But it is what it is, isn't it? I'm trying to figure this computer out. I'm having a nightmare with computers the last couple of days. But. Andy Ruiz, he's a good fighter and I make him a favourite in that fight, but they want it in America. And I still think it probably could happen in America. It's not nailed on that it's going to happen in Saudi. But they've got two or three weeks now to get press conferences sorted and get the fight announced. Now, if the fight happens in Saudi, maybe Joshua could have a bit of, a, of an advantage because it's going to be an Eddie Hearn show isn't it and he's going to want every, all the eggs in his basket and so he should he's going to be to put, he's the promoter putting the, putting the paying everything isn't he he's going to want everything stacked in his favour and that's just what happens doesn't it but I see Joshua improving a little bit looks like he's lost a bit of weight but can he improve his skill set can he improve his skill set that much to beat Ruiz? I don't know, I mean, he didn't just get beat, did he? He got, he got knocked about, didn't he? So, do you know what I mean? It's, oh God, what am I doing here? I'm going to send you this now, Dale. Uh, Alright. I think I've changed my password. You need a password nowadays to get in a password, don't you? Oh, here we are, we're in. Uh, so, I think it's going to be a good fight. Whether people are going to uh, fly out there, I mean, I've seen what flights ranging from £1,125 to £2,200. There you fly. I haven't seen anything about hotels or tickets. I do know about the visas. If you've got a visa, you will have had it because you got a ticket. So, uh, sent. Anyone? It's a spam. Spam inbox. Come on, where, where's that gone? Uh, do you know what? 
Oh, here we are, here we are, here we are. Here we are. Right. Dale. Let me get this sent here. Right, let me just and then I can turn this off. So, it's all looking good, isn't it? For, but like I said, you can't drink alcohol in the stadium, or in the country, I don't think. No alcohol, alcohol ban. Women have to wear certain outfits. So, what are they going to do? Put music on and have an atmosphere that way? I don't know, but is it innovative? Yeah, it is innovative. It's something different. It's off the cuff. It's a bit like my channel here, but... Maybe I might be a, a bit too critical on people. I don't know. I don't know. It's something we're going to have to have a look at. But we're not going to lose. I'm not going to lose my edge with channel. But we're going to see where we're, we're going to see where we're going with channel. Uh, getting back to this, I'm going to talk about something negative now. Eddie Hearn said in his interview that these people are investing money in boxing these Saudis, and he thinks it's good. Now, I'm going to have to pull Eddie up on that. Now, I think it's great what he's doing going to Saudi, but what have Sky ever invested in boxing? Sorry, what have Matchroom invested into boxing? The EIS at Sheffield give them fighters off a conveyor belt. They get the first pick, don't they? I don't agree with that. Second thing, they don't invest in fighters. Sky Sports give them the platform. EIS give them the fighters, Sky Sports, Sky Sports give them the platform. They've only had five fighters who have won world titles from David, but they've had 50 world champions, is it 48 or something? So, who are the other 40 odd people that have won world titles? The people that they've got from other stables. For example, for example, Carl Froch. Who did all the heavy lifting with him and Darren Barker? Froch and Darren Barker. Mick Hennessy did all heavy work, didn't he? Who started Chris Eubank's career off? Mick Hennessy. Savannah Marshall. Mick Hennessy. Tony Bellew, Nathan Cleverly, Ricky Burns. Mick Hennessy. No, not Mick Hennessy, Frank Warren. Uh, Frank Warren. Tyson Fury, if he goes to Eddie Hearn, who started his career? Mick Hennessy got him the world title win against Vladimir. He did all the heavy lifting. Frank Warren continued it for a further five fights after the Otto Wallin. But if Tyson Fury goes to Eddie Hearn, who's cashed, who's cashed a lottery ticket? It will be Eddie Hearn. That's just business and that's where I have a stumbling block with boxing. I, that's where I have a problem. I have, also have a problem with fighters not having brain scans after sparring and after every fight. I have a problem with fighters not getting paid on time. MTK pay everybody on time, they pay them well. That's good, that's positive. Negatives are fighters not getting paid, fighters being told that they've got to sell more tickets and things like that. That has a, I have a problem with that. I have a problem with people who come into boxing and they don't have the laminates and they have these advisory positions and things like that and they're getting into boxers' heads who are already with other people and I have a problem with that. There's too many people getting into the boxing industry and they're having an effect on fighters. Everybody's got to earn and if these people are not having a positive, if they're having a positive effect on fighters that's good but I want to see fighters get paid but I also want to see some loyalty from everybody, from the fighters. I want to see loyalty. I want to see fighters making the most of the talents. I stuck it to Dave Allen the other day and he's deserved it. But he's a mate of mine. He might not be no more, but he will do. He'll, he'll take it on board, David, and brush it off. But when you're wasting your talent, now, Dave Allen had ta talent, otherwise Dennis wouldn't have sold him, but kamikaze matchmaking's ruined him, hasn't it? The things that he's trying to do promoting himself and getting himself out there are damaging him. For example, putting tweets out saying that you've not been well 18 months and you're having bad headaches and you're wearing glasses. Eddie Hearn and British Border Control, they're going to see all that and they're going to think, and Sky are going to be like, God, we can't put Dave Allen on Sky again. He's saying all this, what if he ends up with a blood clot on his head? Or brain damage? Well the, well, the signs are there. Didn't you read his tweets? 
Adam Smith will lose his job, won't he? So David's dug his sin in an hole there, and he printed that out. So now to sort that out, he's going to have to have brain scans, which are 700 quid for a medical, and you know, who's going to take a risk with him?